today's we have our expert kuldeep singh he is a research scholar and already he had taken a lecture so i think uh, no uh, introduction is required for him so today he will be just giving you an insight on the matlab modeling side where how to generally start with a matlab modeling what are the ratings you have to uh fix on this and how we will design a grid or something like uh, an electrical power system and how will we add generators to it so then how to add an inverter because an inverter is surely required whenever a renewable energy source is there it may be in the form of a dc it may be a wind it may be see wind also what you do you just convert into ac to dc and then only again you give it to a inverter and connect it so if it is a fuel cell wind or pv anything you require a inverter so he will just give you an insight of all these things how to connect a uh, inverter to a grid or how to design it all those portions will be covered by him and uh, we i just hand over the session to kuldeep good morning everyone as you already know my name is kuldeep singh and i'm a resource scholar here uh past two days ago uh, we have discussed about how can we connect our elect uh, ev system electric vehicle system to the grid system and what are the components that is required in that in making an ev system today we are going to connect our ev system to the grid okay last time we have only discussed evs today we are going to discuss how can we connect our ev system to the grid as you already know ev system is a dc bank system right so if we connect a dc source along with the inverter circuit to connect to our grid that it can also be considered as we connecting the ev system to our grid system all right so today we are going to discuss the matlab simulation of our electrical power system in which we are going to develop three phase system with rlc load and then we are going to connect our synchronous generator or a synchronous motor that are present in our system or in the grid as a load and then we can we are going to connect our inverter system to that system okay so i have divided our these are the objectives of today discussion the first one is to creating a simple three phase rlc model in which we are connecting with a, first of all we are connected it with rlc branch second we are connected with rlc load then we are going to add our linear transformer to winding linear transformer and then we are going to see how the if what's the problem connect uh, with associated with our non linear type transformer when there is hysteresis present in our transformer okay the second one is creating a three phase system with the electrical machine in this first we are going to model a synchronous generator first then we are going to initialize the generator connecting then we connect it to the grid then we measure power of grid then adding an induction motor as a load in that okay in the third phase we are going to create an inverter for three phase load in which we are converting dc to ac then adding pwm generator in that to uh, provide pulses or gate pulses to our inverter then we add filter circuit in that inverter circuit analyzing that filter circuit analyzing means we are going to see what are the harmonics present in our signals then we are going to make rectifiers and how we can model the transmission line losses present in our lines and how we connect this transmission line losses to our current circuit so this is a simple three phase rlc model okay and this this is the objective in which we are connecting a three phase source with a three phase rlc load in along in all of this we are connecting a three phase transformer to a winding time okay this is the circuit we are going to create so first of all we are going to create a simple three phase rlc model with three phase rlc branch okay in this we have a three phase source then a three phase rlc branch for the uh, transmission line like we even though we have to connect the uh, three phase source with the load uh, in between there are wires that are present so so that why we have to count for three uh, our rl uh, resistors inductance and capacitance present in those lines so we are connecting a three phase series RL, rl branch and in the output side we are connecting a capacitor okay this is just a model for three phase rlc branch okay then in the second in this 
these are the parameters we are going to take in order to develop this circuit. The electrical source parameters are the voltage we have taken is 13,800 volt or 13.8 kilovolt. The source resistance, that means the resistance present in our electrical sources, that is 1 e raised to power minus 3, that is 0 0.001. Okay, that much that uh, that much ohms resistance present in our source. Similarly, the source inductance is one e minus six, and base voltage is again. These are the parameters that we have to feed in our model, and similarly, the simulation time is 0.1 second. RL uh, RLC branch parameters are first is RL branch, what is the resistance and inductance, and then the capacitance branch parameter. Now I'm going to show you this. In our MATLAB simulation file, as you can see, this is our same circuit is there. So in this, as you see, we have power GUI and three-phase source, three-phase RL branch, three-phase VI measurement, and three-phase series C branch. I'm using 2016 MATLAB. Okay, so in this, you just have to click in the empty space and write like three phase source okay the when you write there's an option coming the three phase source that is present in specialized technology fundamental block electrical sources all right if you click this as you will see a face to face vrms is is going is demanding what's the value it but leave it as it is and as you can see the three phase source is exactly like that we have used okay if we double click it then you can see the phase voltage phase to phase voltage as we have already as i've already shown it should be around 13,800, right similarly The source resistance that is one e minus three, okay, and one e minus six, and again the base voltage is thirteen thousand eight hundred. Bye and okay. Similarly, if you want to connect a three-phase RLC branch, just type three-phase RLC branch. Okay. In this, as it is shown, it is, it is saying three phase parallel RLC branch, three phase parallel RLC load, then three phase series RLC branch, and three phase series RLC load. These are the four options it is uh, it's giving. So we need a three phase series RLC branch. So this is the three phase series RLC branch, third options. And as you can see, when we connect it, so this is a three phase RLC branch. And we just have to connect it like this. Okay, in the below circuit, we have already connected all the system. So you just have to make this whole system and type the values. Okay, when you connect all this system, as you will run it, and in the, la uh, in the last slide of our presentation, I have already uh, write down all the commands or all the block and their path. Okay, so if you want to connect your system through MATLAB library. Okay, so in this system, we have a Simscape here. In coming on to Simscape, we go for power system then. In power system, we go for specialized technologies. In specialized technology, we go for fundamental blocks. Okay, if we go in fundamental blocks, there are electrical sources present. Yes, three phase source is there, right? And DC voltage source is also there. When you go for elements, in elements, you can see the three phase RLC branch, series RLC branch, parallel RLC branch, and also there's load are also present in the same um, block system, okay? Same library. Similarly, if you want to connect the machines, these are the machines present that we're going to connect in our system. And in the measurement block, we have a three phase VI measurement as there is present in our model. And also the multimeter is also there, voltmeter is, Voltage measurement device is also there. Impedance measurement device is also there. And current measurement device is also there. So we are going to use voltage measurement device and a three-phase VI measurement device along with multimeter. 
in our model. And in power electronics, we have universal bridge. And most of the time we are going to use universal bridge. If you are not, don't want to use the universal bridge, you can make your own inverter circuit or rectifier circuit using the above present devices like diode, thyristor, GTO, IGBT, idle switch, and detail thyristor. You can make your own inverter circuit or rectify circuit by making or joining this component in a particular design. Okay. So this is the whole system that is that we have made. This is a simple three phase RLC system. Similarly, if we go for another system, let's come back to this. These are the parameters you have and that I've uh, given to our model. Similarly, if in the second system, we are making a three phase RLC model with three phase RLC load. In this case, we have connected three phase source along with three phase series RLC load. Okay. As I already told you, the three phase RLC, uh, RLC load is also present in the same library where the three phase RLC branch is present. Okay. And we have connected a three phase measurement device in this circuit along with multimeter. Here the function of multimeter is very simple. Let's open that model. Let's say this is a model. Okay. In order to calculate the measurement uh, impedance, you can connect a, a impedance device that is present, that is impedance measurement device. And if you don't want to connect the three phase VI measurement device, okay, three phase measurement device we have uh, seen uh, this one. If you don't want to connect this circuit to calculate the voltage value, current value, or impedance value, you can connect a device like this three phase RLC branch connected to three phase C branch along with impedance measurement device. Okay, in this case, F if you double click this three phase series C branch in the measurement, it has shown it is taken branch voltages. Okay, so as we have selected the branch voltage in the measurement, these branch voltages will come in this multimeter current. Okay, the multimeter will check for the number of measurement you have put in these blocks. For example, As seen, the C branch contain the three phase voltages. So the UB1, UB2, and UB3. Okay, these are voltages. And similarly, in this circuit, we have gone for branch current for C three phase series RLC branch, right? In this, we have gone for measurement branch current. So as you can see, there are there will be three currents: IA, IB, IC. And the capacitance branch, the three phase series C branch is providing three voltages, VA, VB, VC. Okay. And these multimeters are, have chosen which measurement uh, value they have to show. Okay. So first uh, multimeter has chosen the voltages and the second multimeter have chosen the current IB1, IB2 and IB3. Okay. And it is given to the scopes most of the time we don't know how to make it, uh, the scope with two inputs double click it this is a right this is a configuration parameter properties click it and in this the number of in input ports make it two or as per requirement you can make it three four and five and the moment you make it to, you want to show your result like this in that matrix form, right? It's a two by one matrix. So go for the layout and then in the layout, just go for this one, two by one matrix. And the moment you go for this one, this is how it will represent. If I make it three and the layout is like this, and apply it. You will see this is divided into three. Okay. So as per your requirement, you can make it two or three or four. All right.
this was the circuit if you run this circuit now in this what we have done is in the three phase vr measurement we have taken the voltage measurement as phase to phase okay rather than phase to ground so it is giving us line voltages and similarly in the three phase rlc load we have taken it as y grounded configuration parameters and the, we have taken branch voltages branch voltage means va vb vc so this is giving us phase to ground voltages the three phase rlc load and the vi measurement is giving us phase to phase voltages that means line voltages so if you run this para, uh, this whole system go for scope you will see this system okay the one is going for the first one is giving the phase voltage and the second one is giving the line voltages okay as you can see line voltage is root 3 times the phase voltage if you multiply this whole system with root 3 you will get about 2 into 10 to power 4 your maximum peak will go up to that point all right so this is our how to make a three phase system with rlc block uh, rlc load so in the next we have to add a two winding linear transformer to the current three phase rlc system so in this we are going to connect a three phase transformer with yy connection in the whole system uh, with our three phase rlc load and in, in this why we are doing this because of if our load is having a voltage uh, rating of different value then we have to connect our three phase uh, transformer because the generator is of 13800 volt and if our load is 2400 volt what should we do then we have to connect a transformer so this is the same thing we are going to do in this circuit so let's see in the open and this is transformer so just we have connected in the previous we have developed three phase source with three phase vi measurement and three phase rlc in between three phase vi measurement and three phase rlc load we have connected a three phase transformer okay you already know where it will be present transformer in the element department okay so if we run this program again on first of all what we have to do here is double click it if you want to make a phase shifted type okay this is there is no phase shift right now because both the uh, windings are of star type but if you want to make phase shift what we will do make the second winding as delta 1 a okay, delta 11 okay it will provide the phase shift 30 degree lag or 30 degree lead right so It will have all this zero, eleven, six, and uh, sorry, only. No, it only has D one and D eleven. In the configuration parameter, there is only D one and D eleven, isn't it? And the last, the like, as you can see, right? So we have taken Y ground, and in the parameters we will given the values of our windings. So let's say that our nominal power is hundred e to power six and sixty hertz, and the winding one parameter is thirteen. 13800 volt and the second parameter is 2400 volt okay so it's a 13800 by 2400 uh transformer okay 13 13.8 kilo volt to 2400 volt step down transformer is there so if we run this program you will see that the v phase load that is the uh, voltage present at the load side is about 2000 volt maximum value is coming at 2000 volt because some of the voltage will be dropped between those lines when coming up to uh, transformer to uh, our rlc load so little bit of voltage will be uh, wasted there and our rlc rlc load will have up to 2000 volt maximum and this is three phase as a source voltage which is up to we have already know 13800 volt so it has shown in there so as we can see how to connect a three phase rlc load which have different voltage parameter to the three phase rlc source using a linear transformer
similarly if we don't have linear transformer okay we want to add a parameter like saturation or hysteresis loss so what we have to do is there is a low linear circuit is there this is same as the previous one just the three phase transform over two winding is not linear as you have seen there is a line in there which is telling us it's a non linear transformer if you double click it how to make a simple linear transformer into non linear type you just have to take that in the type section there is three phase, single phase transformer in the next there is a simulate saturation okay if you click it then the option of simulate hysteresis will also come okay let me show you like this this is a normal linear transformer okay click it simulation saturation then we have simulate simulate hysteresis and specify initial fluxes we are not specifying uh, specifying initial fluxes we are specifying only simulate hysteresis okay if you go there and go for power gui okay in the power gui go for tools in the tools we have hysteresis design okay in power gui we have hysteresis design can I click it to the hysteresis design and it will provide you a hysteresis loop as per your requirement or uh, the design of your transformer they have also provide you with the hysteresis loss sheet okay you can adjust any amount of uh, parameter here and then save it okay the moment you save it in the it will save as hysteresis.mat file as written over here okay and your circuit will look like something like this and if you run this a plot will is coming between flux and current because we have connected this circuit also the below circuit multimeter with si to pu and flux versus current graph will become and in this scope circuit we can see because of saturation or because of hysteresis the waveform is deforming in the rlc load right because in the source no hysteresis was present but after it connecting with the low linear type transformer uh, hysteresis are present and our waveforms are coming distorted because of hysteresis so this is the way to connect a three phase rlc load using no linear type transformer so we have done this part up to adding two winding load linear transformer in the next case we are going and we have also discussed it enable simulate saturation simulate hysteresis by clicking it then we go for power gui and hysteresis design we have covered it right now in the next stage we are going to model a synchronous generator okay how to model a synchronous generator in matlab simulation so in this also you have seen the three phase rlc parallel rlc load is there and three phase vi measurement is there we just have to connect what synchronous machine pu fundamental okay this machine we have to connect which is working as a generator so again we go for the same system file open chapter 3 and we have start circuit okay and the moment we going for this this is how it looks like okay synchronous machine pi fundamental is there if you double click it okay and go for parameters put down your uh, parameters of your synchronous generator that is it is working at 13800 volt at 60 hertz and the power it is giving is 100 e to power 6 100 megawatt okay this is we have given and if we have connected to this whole system but the thing we want to develop is this a synchronous generator is, and we want to find out what its rotor speed what its active power output power or 
reactive output power. We want to check how it is going. So we make another model. Like this one. Okay. This is the same system in which we have connected a bus selector. Okay. This measurement device, if you can uh, double click this bus selector, then it uh, this bus selector will show you the amount of signal it is getting from our synchronous generator. It's getting stator current. It is uh, getting DQ component, like I've uh, told you before, that we have to make our three phase system into two phase system before. Then we can simulate our machines. So this is the model that is pro uh, provided by MATLAB itself. But in this also, they have developed a, a DQ model. OK? And it is also providing a mechanical. In mechanical, we have rotor angle deviation, rotor speed. And similarly, we have output active power and output reactive power. So I have selected mechanical rotor speed, output active power, and output reactive power. Based on your uh, requirement, you can choose any parameter from this circuit. OK? Choose it and just select it. And it will come out here. So there are three uh, variables or that uh, reading that we have to find out. So three outputs are coming. And accordingly, we have made our scope into input with three. So if you run, we are not going to run it right now because we have to initialize our synchronous generator. Right now, we have given power equal to one and field voltage equal to one. Right. So next slide in. In the, our next slide, we are going to initialize our generator. OK, this is only a single machine system right now, Okay, because we have synchronous machine PU fundamental, right? So in this, This is a generator system in which we are going to initialize the parameter of synchronous generator. OK, this synchronous machine. So what we, go, uh, what we do, we go for continuous power GUI. OK, we go in tools and don't go for machine initialization. OK, because for one, uh, one electrical system and two electrical system, that means one generator system, two generator system. We go for machine initialization. But if we go for more than Two, we have to go for load flow. Okay, in the load flow, they will provide the parameters to our generator, to our uh, load or a synchronous machine that we are going to connect in the our upcoming slides. So right now we only have synchronous machine PU. So we are going for machine initialization. There is. Well, only up to the level of two, we require this. We require machine initialization. We have to go for the load. load flow studies because for two system, this uh, uh, this machine in initialization circuit will provide faster way of getting output. But if we go for more than two, then we go for load flow because that will provide more faster way of producing result. Okay, we need accurate and fast result. So that's why we go for two system, one system. That is machine machine in the machine initialization for two generating station. That is for slack bus mm -hmm. and the load flow means swing bus and uh, yeah, right, right. Okay. So in this we have only synchronous machine PU fundamental. As you select this, then we go for swing bus because there is only one present. Mm -hmm. So in the swing bus, we have to provide a terminal voltage V RMS and active power. We are providing it. Okay, that much power it's delivering. Okay. And in the three phase RLC load. We have shown that that active power is 40 megawatt and reactive power is 15 megawatt. Okay, in the this system, if we go for tools and machine initialization, we just have to provide 13 and 1,800 volt terminal voltage and the active power gas because our output load is of 40 megawatt. So we are giving 40 megawatt to our active gas, and what we do is compute and apply. The moment you compute and apply, 
these parameters, the constant parameter changes. First was one and one. Now it's come out to be 0 0.40052 and 1.26909. As per the load requirement, our input setting of a synchronous generator is also changing. So machine initialization will, will what it do? It will provide the initial values to a synchronous generator. So this is the thing we are going. Yes. In the excited state. The power of huh. And then you update it. The moment you update it and run it now. So this is the thing that is coming. The rotor speed is decreasing with respect to time and how the active and reactive power are constant up to the requirement because what's the value of uh, our megawatt rating was 40, right? And that is 0.15. So it's giving that much, but it is giving in per unit. So 0.4 and 0.15 it's giving. So we have seen how to initialize our generator system. The next one is if we want to connect our grid, whole system connecting to the grid. So we have a one per unit machine fundamental and we have a three phase source also there. Okay. We have we are taking if we are connecting a three phase source, this three phase source will act as swing bus or slack bus. Okay, and this and then we can select this uh, synchronous machine PU fundamental as PQ bus or PV bus with, with respect to our requirement. And in this, we have connected a three phase parallel RLC load along with three phase resistor load. Okay, the load of uh, the three phase parallel RLC load of 25 megawatt and three phase parallel RLC RL load of 20, 40 megawatt active power and 15 megawatt 15 mvr reactive power so this lag bus and this synchronous generator should provide these values to this circuit so again file open good so this is the, the system we have created. We have already made this system, right? Synchronous generator to load. We just have connected another three phase source. Okay. What we want to make is an infinite bus, right? What is a grid? It's an infinite bus, right? So we are going to can make a system where uh, there are one or two and more than two sources and there are two to three or more than three loads. Okay, if we make this system, that means we are connecting, making a grid. Okay, so this is a system we are making a grid in which we have connected a three-phase source. In this system, if we double-click it, this is 3800 volt, and this, in this, we am specifying a short circuit level parameters. Okay, because in the grid system, we have short circuit parameters that we have to define for our uh, generating station also. So it has provided. That is 100 megawatt is the VA present and 3800 volt. That is uh, the voltage present in our three phase source and X by R ratio is seven. So this is the system we have made. And if you go for the load flow here, this is a swing bus. It, it will automatically take it as swing bus. Similarly, because we have connected only two. All right. So we again go for continuous tools and machine initialization. Okay. In this, we have synchronous machine PU fundamental and we have taken it as P and Q generator system. Okay. In the generating station, we have known it, uh, the one is the swing bus, then is the PV bus and then is the PQ bus. So we are already defining the P and Q value for this synchronous machine. Okay. So we have that 65 megawatt is the power that is going to deliver maximum to maximum and the reactive power is going to deliver is 15 megawatt. MVR, sorry, 15 MVR. So if you compute and apply, okay, it will give its value to this, these constants, okay. And if you run it again, because we are running for the 10 seconds, it will take some time. 
if we go for 0.1 second it will take very less time then according to this we have to change our configuration parameters if we model configuration parameters is there and just change the solver here okay variable step it is already have taken the ODA to uh, TB stiff it is uh, this solver is already providing the best result for this complex system okay and it is already faster than the other uh, solvers so this is the uh, our generator whose speed is we are uh, saying the rotor speed is moving where is varying variable speed we are getting and similarly the output active power and reactive power is delivering is around 0.65 and 0.15 okay per unit and similarly this is the voltage and current we are getting from our synchronous generator we can already uh, we can also find the amount of power that is delivered by our three phase source and in this we have connected a power three phase instantaneous power block and then connected to the grid power so if we double click it as you can see our grid power uh, the three phase source is providing around 0 to 100 watt and the reactive power it is delivering is about zero because all the power that is uh, that we need to give to our loads are provided by synchronous system or synchronous machine system so it's providing less power and reactive power to our loads so if we go for now a synchronous machine system okay So we have already covered that electrical power source we have to enable specify the short circuit level parameter in which we have to provide face to face base voltage base VA and X similarly in the power GUI block we are going for machine initialization and we are going for machine list in the machine list we are checking the bus type should be a PQ generator type and then we have to specify active power and reactive power in that circuit so in this Next thing is adding an induction motor. As you as you have seen in this, we are adding an asynchronous type machine PU system, right? We are making a three-phase RSC load and we are connecting it with the three-phase transformer. This is the whole system in which we are connecting a three-phase uh, connecting a synchronous machine along with the three-phase load. So in this, we are going to specify that we are using the transformer. So the transformer will be of 13.8 to 2400 kilovolt, 13, uh, sorry, 2400 volt. Okay, that type of transformer we will be using. The load will be of also 2400 volt. Okay, so again, going to this system. motor so this is the system we are connecting okay in this we have connected a three phase transformer with two winding and a, a synchronous machine pu okay because now we have more than two system two generating units are there one asynchronous machine are there so in order to initialize these three all right we going for load flow rather than machine initialization so again in this circuit if you check this the parallel r branch okay is of 25 megawatt type but it's a voltage of 2400 volt because we have connected a transformer parameters 13.8 kilovolt to 2400 volt type so similarly these parameters are also 2400 volt and 25 megawatt type so as you will see this machine required 25 megawatt this rl load this r load provide 25 megawatt this rlc load provide uh, needs 40 megawatt and 15 uh, mvr reactive power okay so all these values should be provided by 
these two parameters okay so if you go for continuous pvr joke uh, so first of all what we have to do is make this system in the load flow make it pq bus all right synchronous machine pu system because this three phase source will act as a swing bus always okay and then the we make this synchronous machine pu fundamental in the load flow we will provide generator type is pq then we will provide the active power generation is 75 megawatt and reactive power it can provide up to infinity okay that we have given in the similarly in this case in the load flow we have given the mechanical power is 25 megawatt that is required and in this load flow is swing bus so if you go for continuous power gui and go in tools and load flow okay so here this is the whole system if we compute it okay we have to uh, click on the compute and you will see the air uh, asynchronous machine required 25 megawatt okay rlc load required 25 megawatt sm the synchronous machine is providing 75 megawatt and 25 mvr reactive power RSC load is of 40 megawatt and 15 MVR. And this is our voltage source. Okay. And how much power it's delivering? Because P and Q is not defined for swing bus, right? So we, uh, this load flow is actually calculating the amount of power that is delivered by the swing bus, the SM, and how much power it is giving to the loads. So as you can see, the amount of power ASM is getting is. 26 megawatt and 19.37 MVR. Okay. Similarly, our RLC load 40 and 50, 50, 40 megawatt and 15 MVR is required, and our synchronous machine is providing 75 megawatt power, active power, and 25 MVR reactive power. It's showing it's there. Okay. Similarly, the swing bus is how much providing? Swing bus, swing bus is providing 18 megawatt. Okay. Right now. It's not given in there where we have put the parameters. The swing bus is of how much megawatt or how much reactive power it's giving. We didn't know, right? So and by computing it, we have actually shown that the uh, swing bus is providing 18 megawatt active power and 11.87 reactive power to the whole system. Okay. If you add up, it will come out to be the amount of reactive power that is needed by asynchronous motion or motor as well as by RLC load Z. Okay. Then you apply to the model after computing, apply to the model and then run the whole system. Okay. So this is the motor parameters, only speed is there. Okay, so it's around 0.97655. Okay, this and uh, this is the output active power and reactive power provided by the synchronous machine and its speed, how it's varying with respect to load. And similarly, the amount of power that is delivered by our swing bus, this much. As you have already known, 19 megawatt is provided by active power is uh, given by our swing bus. So it's coming around 19, right? 19 megawatt is coming around. And similarly, how much reactive power? 11 reactive power, 11 MVR, mega MVR. So it's coming around 11.8 MVR, right? So this is showing the exact result that is coming in our circuit. So load flow analysis, by doing the load flow analysis, the whole circuit will uh, initialize in a faster way. Okay. So. If we have a single machine, we can go directly to the load, load flow analysis or? Go for machine, machine initialization. 
यू कैन गो फॉर लोड फ्लो बट अब वही है ना कि कहते थे कि हथौड़े से काम चल रहा है और आप क्रेन उठा के ले आए वो यही बात हमारी होती है ना ज्यादातर तो वही सिस्टम है यहाँ पर भी सो द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज कन्वर्टिंग डीसी टू ए सी इन्वर्टर विद पी डब्ल्यू एम जनरेटर सो इन दिस वी हैव यूज अवर्सल ब्रिज अ यूनिवर्सल ब्रिज इज अंपल ब्रिज सर्किट थ्री फेज ब्रिज सर्किट विच आर यूटिलाइजिंग सिक्स स्विचेज सो we have given a pwr generator with six pulses to this our universal base circuit and this we have taken a dc voltage source rather than taking a dc voltage source you can also take pv cell system with boost converter and also you can use uh, ev system or wind generation system or fuel system okay fuel cells you can use you can apply anything here okay i am not connecting it that because they are all, all what is what are they doing they are giving a dc voltage so in the hybrid system where you are connecting your pv system fuel cell and wind energy system at the dc link they are giving the DC, uh, constant dc output okay so that system is different okay and this system is different okay you have to just connect it okay so in this we have taken the series rlc load and universal bridge and three phase vi measurement device okay and in this we are taking a dc voltage source of 900 volt the universal bridge is of igbt diode type and the r load is of 600 voltage and active power required by this is 1 megawatt similarly the pwm generator two level is of carrier frequency 3000 type you can change your carrier frequency at and up to your design okay and in this you have to uh let me show you something first hmm this is the system If you write P W generator here, two level type, okay. This is how it actually looks like, because it's required an input, a reference value. उसके पास आनी चाहिए, जिसके ऊपर वो compare करके करेगा. But if you don't want to give the reference value, so what you have to do? Double click it, okay. And this internal generation of reference signal is there. Just click it. okay and provide the modulation index 0.75 or according to your design ki mera modulation index itna hoga aur itni ye wave generate karega theek hai jab aap ye karenge to ye circuit kuch is tarah se lagega fir theek hai now it providing a pwm signal which is required by our igbt system so this is a simple circuit okay universal bridge as you know just type universal bridge this is a universal bridge is different from this okay the universal the same universal bridge can be used for rectifier purposes also okay but we are do, uh, what we are doing right now we are making an inverter system so this system is has to change a little bit just press control i click, uh, click it and control i this is for inverter right this is सोर्स को लेना है थ्री फेज को सिस्टम बनाना है ओके अगर आपको इसको रेक्टिफाई लेना है तो आप क्या करोगे जस्ट मेक इट दिस वन थ्री फेज सप्लाई इट विल टेक ए बी सी एंड इट विल प्रोवाइड डीसी वोल्टेज आउटपुट विल बी देयर सो यू कैन मेक द सेम यूनिवर्सल बेस सिस्टम इनटू इन्वर्टर सिस्टम एंड इनटू रेक्टिफायर सिस्टम ओके इफ इफ यू डबल क्लिक इट देन देयर इज अ सर्किट दैट पावर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइस ओके हियर इट इज यूजिंग थायरेस्टर let uses as igbt diodes so it will somehow look like this same one and if you want to, uh, want to make a rectifier just use diodes it will look right the same system can be used for as a rectifier and also inverter easy right so if you run it this is how it looks like 
okay you can see the blue orange and yellow right if you see it it's not a good waveform but it's still giving a sinusoidal type little bit sinusoidal type right very little sinusoidal type because it's connect and it's having way too much harmonics if you want to check how many uh, how many harmonics is present in this so first of all go for scope configuration properties logging log data to workspace if you go for load data to workspace then it go uh, ask you variable name and the save format should be in structure with time okay apply it and okay it. so then go for power gui because inverted circuit requires switching okay for for this purpose only we go for discrete type solver in power gui as you can see in the simulation type solver simulation type we first were going for continuous type right in all the previous example we are going for continuous type but the moment we came for switching devices or our inverter circuit we are going for discrete type because it's providing good results okay in the toolbox go for load flow sorry go for fft analysis in this because you want to check how many harmonics are present in this signal right so go for this circuit So, what is showing the scope data was the parameter that we have given to our workspace in the scope system, and the input is variable v, and that in input we have three different waveforms v a v b v c right. So the signal is one two three. So we are calculating for one. If you want to calculate your harmonics present in the signal, don't go for one cycle. Okay, go for five or more than five cycles. Okay, we have taken five, and the maximum frequency preference should be more than. We have taken ten thousand because our signal carrier frequency is three thousand. So we are going to calculate what the uh, harmonics present at three thousand, six thousand, nine thousand. Okay, so we are going for ten thousand, and then we are going for display. So as you can see in this circuit, inverter circuit, the amount of TSD present is ninety-eight percent. so it's not giving a good waveform so if we want to make a better inverter system either go for multi line inverter system or you can go for filter circuits okay so next we are going to check the filter circuit this one so in this we have connected an lc filter the first configuration was that what DC voltage source IGBT, then VI environment and three phase uh, series RC. Now we have connected an LC, LC filter at the output of inverter. What is uh, there in this system? There is an L branch and a C branch. Three phase L branch and three phase C branch, which is making our LC filter. Okay. In this system, after connecting this, I have made a sub system. Okay. A sub system is what if you select all this system. Okay, and then right-click it. Here is create subsystem from selection. Okay, the moment you click this, it will make a circuit like this. Okay, this is the circuit present in our system, right? And this is the system. But can uh, I have chosen that system like this, and then said create subsystem and This is how it will look like. Then change the name according to way is the LC filter or RC filter. Check it. Okay, and then run this. In this, we also check that let's the scope should have the logging and is have log data to workspace should be click over here, and the variable name should be given scope data and the save format structure with time should be given. Okay, 
we have to check this thing and then we run this program and again go for a 15 analysis so how many how many are present in this system so the system is actually looking like this okay the waveform is somewhat sinusoidal right by applying the lc, LC filter our waveform has improved so again in this system voltage is there signal is giving one and we have to give number of cycles five maximum frequency should be 10,000 and then display so as you can see the harmonics present in this signal is 7.60 percent in the previous case it was 98 percent right by using the lc filter we have reduced it to 7.6 percent okay but What's the main advantage in MATLAB? We can take any value of L and C, which is not the practical case, right? So we have to go for multilayer inverter circuit and then apply the filter circuit. Okay, because after applying the multilayer inverter circuit, the number of harmonics present in the output of inverter will be around 12%, 11% if we go for 11 level type. At that point of time, the amount of harmonics present is only of 11 or 13 time highest frequency that is present in the signal. So the filter circuit requirement for L and C will be reduced. Okay, those equipment we can get and make an easy filter, very cheap filter we can get. So this is how we make this whole system in which we have used a filter circuit and how can we uh, calculate the number of harm present in that signal. Next thing is, Innovator with LC filter is, is also there. We have log data to workspace. All the commands that you need are provided in the in this presentation. Okay, the steps you have to take. In this, we are going to create a rectify system. Now we have uh, make what did we have make? We have made RGBT inverters along with the RLC load. Now we are connecting this system with the diode rectifier and providing to our load system. Okay. So, again, going for this circuit, open, rectify. Okay, this is the this is the system we have created. Just I have shown you, in order to make a diode rectifier that like this type, you uh, use universal bridge and make use of diodes. Like double click it. This is a universal bridge. Okay, and in this power electron device should be diode type. Last time we have used an IGBT type, right? IGBT diodes. In this, we are using diode type because in the diode you don't require the gate pulses. So it's a simple rectifier system. So and then you can provide the inductor and the load. This is similar circuit like this system. Just use the parallel RLC branch or parallel or series RLC branch in order to connect this whole system. Okay, if you run this program again, you will see this in uh, this LC, this inductor and this load will be providing a filter. Okay? Means it will reducing what the ripples present in our signals because as you already know in the all the in uh, rectifier present in our system, they will pro uh, they will give you a ripple output, not pure DC, right? So we are connecting a filter circuit here with inductor and R RC and it will give us almost constant DC. Okay. It will providing us almost constant because in this you can also see there are ripples present, but it's a, uh, the amount is very less. Okay. So this is how you will make a diode rectifier, rectifier circuit. Now in this, the last thing that we have to do is the last thing we have to do in this is three phase PI section line. In the grid system, we have transmission lines, right? So in the transmission line, we have to give a, uh, what we have to give is what's the R value, what's the inductance value, okay? How much length it is, what's the power required by that line? So this three-phase PI section line is provided between 
inverter circuit and rectifier circuit. That means our inverter is present at somewhere 5 km or 10 km distance. So we are providing what? A P, uh, three phase PR section line in between the circuit. This, this thing is only given because the distance between the rectifier circuit and inverter circuit is very long. That means five kilometers, 10 kilometers. Like you are sitting here and you want to operate a circuit in sector 29. Okay. At that point of time, you need lines, uh, transmission lines or distribution lines. So this three phase PI section nine will be providing the parameters for those lines. Okay. So again, We open circuit. This is the circuit in which we are providing three phase pi section. In the pi section, we are providing the 60 hertz frequency and uh, we are providing inductance value, resistance value and capacitance value present in this pi section line and we are given the line length is five kilometer according to your requirement if the line length is 10 kilometer these values will also change right so if you want to design any circuit or grid system just go for what are the parameters that is required by that system and just put it here and this is what a uh, transmission line look like a grid system how it will look like okay so we are going to stop here we are going to stop here these are the require uh, parameters that you have to give by your side and then these are the Docks that we have used in the circuits, all the circuits, and along with their path in the simulation library. Okay, just check it here and you will get the blocks. Otherwise, if you don't have 2016, MATLAB 2016, because in the MATLAB 2016, you just have to type in the empty space, make a new model, type it, and it will come. The block will come. Okay, so these are the all the element that is present in the system the second one is this and the third one is this any question please Because I really want to tell you how we work in the MATLAB simulation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, did any teacher told you how to use this circuit uh, MATLAB like this? During this course, it is not. Uh, mm, because this is the only, uh, yes, in the Saturday program, they have shown that MATLAB simulation will be there. So I wanted to show you that how we work in the MATLAB simulation, how we connect this electrical system and make inverter circuit or rectify circuit and how to connect it with the grid system. So in this, we have already uh, discussed how to make a three phase system, then how to make a three phase system with synchronous generator source or how to connect a synchronous motors loads or RLC load or R load. Okay. And then we have uh, made inverter circuit and rectify circuit and connected with our uh, transmission line pi section, right? So this is the whole system. And if you want to make an electrical system where we want to connect a DC system like PV, uh, wind energy system, fuel cell and electric vehicles uh, to the grid, what you need requirement is you have to, you need a chopper circuit. My model told you how to make a chopper circuit, then inverter circuit. In between, there's a transmission line parameters you have to provide, okay? So in this system, I have given you up to inverter circuit, okay? After that, you need a DC uh, chopper circuit and a DC source like PV and that. So 
uh, if you go again go to your home or colleges just try to develop a circuit in which you are uh, needed a battery circuit or electric vehicles or you are giving a standalone pv system and connecting it to the whole system because i've already shown you up to the inverter parts so at that point rather than using the dc voltage source you can use that system with boost inverter a boost chopper circuit and uh, PV cells, wind energy system, and fuel cell. So, so that will be your work in the future. So this is the system, and thank you very much.